Okay, so today we are gonna cover chapter two of Mastering Shining. This is the chapter for basic UI. And this chapter will be covered by Femi. So you can start whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay, so today we are going to be discussing about uh, chapter two of the book, uh, which is about uh, basic uh, UI. So for the learning objective, we are going to learn how to manipulate uh, various input and output uh, control uh, in, our, in the user interface of the Shiny app uh, in which uh, we are trying to develop. So basically every shiny app, we all know that basically every shiny app, the user interface uh, normally consists of, of three components. We have the inputs and these inputs can be the text. Uh, it can be numeric variables, which is like numeric inputs. It can be dates, which you have date inputs. We can also have date range inputs. Uh, we can have radio button. We can also have checkbox. Uh, file upload and also uh, some download uh, buttons. So we also have the outputs in the Shiny app. And this output, it can be text, it can be tables, it can be plots or a download, maybe for the users to download, uh, maybe like the plot, uh, plots from the, from the user interface. We can also have layout function. Uh, we, this is like the pages, with sidebar and main panel. We can also have bootstrap, uh, tab sets, and also teams. So this one has to do with the uh, uh, the styling of the user interface uh, of the Shiny app. So th th those are the uh, basic components in which every Shiny app in which we are developing, uh, they have. Uh, for this, because this is still a passcode note I am using, they just put some, uh, some notes here that for we to learn shiny, we need to read the Mastering Shiny book, which is what we are going through. Uh, we can also look at the GitHub repo. Uh, we can also look at the R4DS GitHub repo and also the Mastering, uh, the cheat sheets for the Mastering Shiny. So the basic uh, user, uh, the basic shiny, the basic user interface of every shiny app as I said earlier on, uh, it has uh, it has two components. It has uh, it has the UI, which is the user interface, which is what every user of the Shiny app is interacting with. We also have uh, the server function. This is the back end of the Shiny app where we can wrap in our code. That uh, uh, that is going to determine how the app is running. So the user interface contains nested R function uh, that consists of, that assists in assembling uh, the HTML. So, but first, before we can have access to this, uh, we need to, first of all, uh, inter initiate uh, the library Shiny to load Shiny. So uh, for, the, for the user interface, we have the flute page. So within this flute page, the first argument is always uh, the, the, uh, the input ID. So like in this case, we need to pass in the input ID and also the label. So those other two, those other two as, as they explain in the book, in the Mastering Shiny book, uh, basic user interface, uh, I think uh, there is a section in which they say this, those other two components, uh, they are very, very important. Uh, the, the, those other two components, uh, they are very, very important. That is the, the input ID and the label argument uh, by position. We need to call them by position just like this. We know that this minimum is going to be the input ID. Uh, this is going to be, then the, this is going to be the label. Then every other argument just go by the default name where we can say the value. Uh, we can have minimum value. We can have uh, the maximum value just uh, like that in the user interface. So for the server function, 
Uh, this will be a function where we have inputs, outputs, and session. But this is just a default signing app. Uh, they did not define any server function here. Then for us to initialize the app, we need to call shiny app, where we say UI, which is the user interface, server, which will be equals to server. So let's just see one example there. So I can just say, uh, this is my shy library shiny. I to start the shiny app. So we can say UI which is, uh, we can say we have load, load page. Then we can have title, title panel. I can say this is demo, uh, shiny, shiny app. Then I can say I have, sorry, I can say I have, uh, select, select inputs. Then the first argument will be input ID. Uh, the input ID I can say, input ID I can just put uh, uh, H. Label will be, I say, what is your age? What is your age? So when I run, sorry, age. I need to have forgotten to put the choices. Choices. Maybe four six and seven okay so for the server we can have which will be a function of input output session but this is just a simple example. I don't want to run. Then I have shiny, shiny app. Sorry. Shiny. Put it here. Shiny, shiny app. UI, we should be UI. Server, we should be server. So if you just run the app. So this is just a simple app for now. The app is not doing, I've not defined any logic in the server. Okay. I don't know if there are any question for now before or I should just proceed with the book. So we, this is how we define the input ID. For now, the input ID is age. Then the label is what is your age. Then this is the server, which is a function taking input, output, session. Then this, this line 14 is what is going to uh, initialize uh, the shiny app. So, so, and they also explain in the book that naming the input ID has two constraints. So uh, when we are naming the input ID, it should contain only letters, numbers, and underscore. So the input ID should not contain any special character. It should have no slashes, no dashes, no special, uh, no, no special characters. Because uh, this is very, just like when we are defining our a variable object in R. So we, we the shiny also take that uh, convention. We should not use any special character because in the server uh, function, in the server function, we are still going to make reference to this input ID because when we, we have to reference the input ID because that is how we are going to tell the server how we want it to render uh, 
this UI component in which we are passing to the server. So the input ID uh, must be very unique. We need to make sure that once we are selecting it, the input ID, the input ID in the in the UI, it must be very a unique name in which we can come back to the server and make a reference uh, to that uh, unique name uh, when we are trying to run the app. Okay, so so what can one one input uh, in the user interface? So in the user interface, we can pass in text string, which is like the the input ID, we can text inputs, we can pass in text input whereby the user can supply a specific input. We can also pass in numeric uh, variable, which is numeric inputs. We can pass in numeric inputs into the user interface. We can also pass in dates. We can also pass in limited choices, which is radio button, uh, checkbox, uh, select uh, drop down menus. We can also pass in file upload, but file upload, uh, it has a special, uh, uh, it has a special uh, syntax because we need to a special way in which we are going to call this uh, in the server. I think we will still come back to this uh, in future chapter. We also have the action, the action buttons, and also action buttons. Uh, if it's usually involved, uh, we also making reference to the events reactive or reactive expression, uh, events reactive in the server. So, but uh, like the general, the general command form for this, we have input command where we, first of all, we make reference to our input ID, which is a string. Don't forget tab completion label because to string two, because we, we normally require, we supplying the input ID and label. These have to be, they have to go one in, they have to follow each other, the input ID and label. Then every other, just as they explained, they every other, every other variable, we need to use their default name like value, which will be the initial value. Once uh, we initialize the app, this the initial, this is what is going, the app is going to display. Uh, the minimum value, it can be zero, the maximum value, we can choose a specific value, we can specify the width of that input command. For this, we are using 400 pixel. We can also specify the height for the input command. We can also specify uh, the number of columns, the number of rows. We can put the placeholder, which is a word giving the user a hint. We can resize, resize to fill contract span. So how, how can we specify all these input commands? So just like the app in which I was working on, I can say here yeah, I have text, text inputs. Then the input ID, I can say name. Then the label, I can ask for the user that what is your name what is your name so i can run this and we can start the app again so i've just added a new input command where the user can just type in their name they can type in their name into the shiny app okay but we have not done anything we are still uh, working with the uh, user interface we can also have uh, the date inputs. We can also have the date, the date inputs. Yes, input ID, uh, date. Uh, the label will be what? Choose a date. Choose a date. We can also have date range inputs. Dates date range inputs, input ID, I can use dates, label, choose a range of dates. So we can have this also uh, where the user, there will be a date range 
So for the date input, it will just give us a calendar. The default will be today's date. For the date range input, it will also show us calendar. We can just pick one item that we are looking for. And, uh, and we are going to be able to get uh, that input. So the, for the most important thing is this, the input ID must be unique and also uh, the label Label will just be the default name that will appear in the app that will give a description of what that app is doing to the user. But the input ID is very, very important because when we start, when we will, because the next section will be looking at how we are going to be working with the server size because that is when we need to know how we are going to make reference to this input ID when we are working uh, in the server side of the Shiny app in which uh, we are creating. I don't know if there are any questions up till now. If there... Hello? Yeah, I think uh, so far I can understand what's going on. And uh, yeah, it, 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 it appears we, we have several functions like select input, text input, and then all these, uh, the kind of input we provide depend on these ones as you highlighted in the slides so yeah yes quite clear yes, I, I think there is also text text area inputs yeah input id so let me say uh word so for the let's see how what this one level enter a word let's just put yeah, let's see let's, what the text area input is doing. So it's just, I did not specify the number of rows, uh, text area inputs, number of row. Uh, I can specify the number of rows that I want that I can say it should be six rows. Yep. So it's just going to be something like this in which the user, they can just be typing the text. They can just be entering text. Uh, in that case, at the end, we now go back to the server side, then we collect all those texts and we can store it maybe in a, in a spreadsheet. Okay, so something is the jar. Okay, so uh what do i have okay so for here with this they are talking about text and numeric inputs so just as i said every output in the ui is coupled with a render in the server okay so we have a ui which is a flute page which is a default html uh page, I think we can see that the float page, uh, let me clear this, float, float page, you can see that this is the div, which is a XTA opening div, which is a class container float, and this is the closing div. So this is just a default HTML page. Then we have text inputs. So within, within this text inputs, we have input ID, F underscore name, then we have the label, which is first name, okay? We also have another text input. Input ID is name. Placeholder is what is your name. So this placeholder, I think this is the label. So, but when I was running it, I have to replace this uh, with the label. This is supposed to be the label. Then we have password inputs, the input ID, password, Label, what is your password? This is for the user to enter specific password before they can uh, get access into the app. We also have text area input, just as I mentioned. Input ID, we have story. Uh, label, tell me about yourself. Then the number of rows, they say it should be three rows. Then we also have- Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Okay. Um, I so I thought, uh, I mean, it just came to me that uh, the underscore was uh, accepted. It is it's not a special character. So we can use underscore in the input ID. Yeah. yeah. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. Underscore is accepted. I think we can try that. It's accepted. Yes. 
we can put underscore here. It's going to be accepted. Perfect. It works. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> okay. So what again, we have a numeric input. We have input ID, which is X. Then for the label, uh, is dependent variable then value is equals to value is equals to, uh, to ten. So, uh, what do they have again? They have slider inputs, which is the slider control. Then the input ID is Y range. Uh, label should be range of Y. Then the value will be between a vector of numbers ranging from ten uh, to twenty. Then the minimum value should be zero. Maximum value uh, should be should be hundred. So, if uh, so, this is just uh, the the inputs uh, control in within the user interface. So then, when we now go back uh, to the server's uh, side, that is where we now make we we need, need to now tell uh, the the server side how do we want it to render uh, this uh, user interface in which. We are developing because normally when developing a shiny app we spend more time in the user interface because that is where we specify all the uh, uh the look of the app so once we are through with uh, designing the look of how the app should look then we now go to the server side where we we are going to pass in all the logic which will define how that app is going to work because that is where we write all the R code uh, that will define how this app is going to work. So here we have uh, we have the dates, limited choices, file upload, and action button. So how do we deal with this in the user interface? Uh, we have a flute page for the date inputs. Input ID is date of birth, which is, uh, then the label will be when were you born, we also have date range inputs. Date range input is very useful if you want uh, the user to pass in a range of dates. So that is when we can use the date range inputs. But if you want the user to just supply one date, uh, and they always the default is a year, month, date, a syntax, but we can override that. If you want just a single date, so we, we use the date input. But if you want the user to supply a range of dates, then we are going to make use of the date range input. So in this case, the input ID is uh, is holiday. Uh, the label is give starts and end of holiday season. So this is going to be the label. This is what will be displayed uh, in the app. So, so, so by default, uh, uh, the 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 function date date input and date range input knows that the first uh, parameter you provide belongs to the argument uh, ID, and then the other one goes to the label, like DOB yes. goes to the ID and the other one goes to the, you don't need to, again, type them in. Yes, perfect. Okay. So it's, cor it's correct. So we can see that here. I think I still have a app here. I will remove this. Okay. Then I will remove this for the date range inputs. Okay, then I start the app. Oh, nice. And this, you can see the app, by default, the app is going to pick it. But if we have several other input control, it will be better, the input ID, yeah. just as they explain in the book. They say, Ashani will always detect that the first two, uh, the first two inputs is for, the first input is always the input ID, uh, the mm -hmm. next one is going to be the label, but they explain in the book that every other other argument should go by their name, just like they did here, the value, they use the name with 50, uh, mm -hmm. the minimum, they use zero, maximum, they use 100. Other arguments should go by their default name. Mm -hmm. Johnny will know that the first input is going to be, the, it's going to pick it as the input ID, then the next will be the label, but every other argument in which you want to pass into that input, we should specify the, the actual name. Perfect. So 
So here we have let me, limited choices. So we can have something like animals, uh, which is a vector. We have cats, dog, uh, porpoise. Uh, these are place order above UI. Then we can have something like, if we do not want to use uh, the select the text inputs, select inputs, we can have something like a radio button, which would, which would display all these choices for the user to pick one. We just, uh, we just let's see how this uh, work. Let me take this to the app that I was working on. Okay. So that we'll see how this radio button is going to work. Yeah. So this is the animals. So let me grab this uh, radio button. Okay. Place it here, run this. So this is the app. We can see the, the user will just select one. You just need to select one, which is very useful. But it, you know, if you, in case you want to select more than one input with the radio button, it is not possible to do that with the radio button. But there is another argument called the checks box group inputs. In that case, the user can select uh, uh, more than one inputs at once. But with radio button, the user cannot select uh, more than one input. But with the text inputs, uh, with the select inputs, we can set multiple to be equals to true. If we set multiples to be equal to true, then the user can they, pa they can pass in more than one input as a go, uh, which is very uh, useful. So I'll stop the app again and go back uh, to the to the notes. So if you want the user to upload a file, we can have file input, upload, the default is not. But this always require a special way to deal with this in the server, in which they do discuss in the book that will come to this in the future chapter, maybe when we are talking about discussing about file, upload, and download. So we'll, uh, we'll, we are still going to come to this uh, in the future chapter. Uh, we can also have action buttons. So action buttons, the input ID is click, then the label it will be click me. We can also have action button, input ID, the label, and this is the icon, icon which is a computer. So this, uh, this also involves we specifying the event reactive in the server side, which we will still see this in, in the next chapter. Uh, in the next uh, future chapter in which we'll be discussing uh, on the book. So what can one output? So what can we output in, the, in our shiny app? So we can have a text. So we know that this text, this will be text output. Then we specify within that text output, we just need to pass in the output ID. Then if 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 the what we want to uh, what we want to render is something we want to be printed in our console, in that case we need to use what we call uh, the verbatim text output. So when we call the verb, verbatim text output, then the way in which we can get that result in the in the server, we need to use the render prints before we can. Uh, get that result in the, but in terms of tables, there are two types of table in which we can uh, render in the shiny app. We have the static table, which is we can get that with the table outputs. Then in the server, we need to use the render table. But when it is a dynamic table, in which the which which is dynamic in which the user can interact with it, in that case, we need to use uh data table outputs, then in the server, we need to call the render data table outputs. Then for the plots, we have two types of plots. We can have static plots or interactive plots. If we have a static plot, 
In that case, we need to use plot outputs. Then we pass in the uh, the, the, the output ID. Then if we are we want to use interactive plots, then that in that case we need plot, we need to load plotly because we'll be using plotly outputs. Then render plotly. We call the render plotly in the server. We can also have download. So this download, I think we will still come back to download in future chapter. So like for the text, just as I was saying, every output is coupled with a render in the server. Every output is coupled with a render in the server. We have render text in this, which goes with the text outputs. We also have verbatim text outputs, which is in the UI. For the, in the server, we are using render print before we can get this. This is just like printing results in our R studio, R console. So the user interface. So how is the, does it look like? We have the flute page. We have text outputs. We have hello friend, which is, uh, which is the output uh, ID. I think uh, that there is a miss up in this no is because there is a space here because just like the convention they explained, yeah. uh, there is no supposed to be space in between. So this input, this output, output ID, there is a mix up because there is not supposed to be space in between. So in this one, we have verbatim text outputs. So the, the output ID is SSN. So we need, because this SSN, we need to call this function the same way uh, in the server, when we are going back to the server. So in the server, which is a function of inputs, outputs, and what session, then we have our coli, op, opening coli brace, and we also have co closing here. Then we have outputs, uh, dollar sign text. Uh, we have render text. We pass in animal. So we want to render, we want to print all the animal. We also have outputs, dollar sign, code. Uh, we have render prints. Uh, we have render prints, uh, state name. We also print OK. So this is going to print all the state name in our console. It's also going to print uh, this. It's also going to print uh, uh, this. So let's see how that works. Uh, We have text, text, text outputs, output ID. I said text. We have verba, verbatim text output I output ID. Let's you verbatim. Verb. Okay. So in the server. So I can have outputs, dollar sign text, which is we have render, render text, render text expression, render text, uh, Let's say month dot app. Okay. So we have output dollar sign verb. We have render render prints. Reactive expression summary. Yeah, I should pass summary of empty cars data sets okay so i run the ui i run the server start the app okay so this one will be january february march april may june July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay, so this is the render print. This is what the render print is doing. 
this is what the render text is doing. It's just going to render that text. So this is a print. So if you want to return results that we output our just like results that will be printed in our R console. So that in that case, we will use render prints. We use render prints to render it. It's just going to re return that result. So uh, I don't know if there are any questions before I proceed. So in this in this section, we could also add the labels to this render output and render, render verbatim output. Yes, let's see. That will be the label. I think that will be in, let's see, the yeah. UI. Yeah. No, there is no label in the UI. Yeah, because I was seeing like the text, the abbreviation of the months were like, uh, it was not clear the difference up there and the verbatim text below it. So okay, I thought it see. would be nice to have a label for the top one and also the second one. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But I don't know how to fix that label. Oh, sorry. I missed something. Months dot dot up. up. Yeah. So, yep, yeah, I know. So this is just going to print, but we miss that but maybe when we are going into the future chapter we'll see how to add a navigation bar page or yeah. nav bar menu well to na navigate between those pages so i think maybe we uh this is just like an example let's see how the user interface how we can put various input control on the use user interface okay or maybe So what again do we have? Okay, tables. These non tables. Uh, we have just like I explained, we have two types of table. We have static table for the static table. We have table outputs, and in the server we need to use uh, the render table to 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 render that table. Then if we have interactive table, in that case we have data table outputs then we are going to render it using the data render data table, which this is for dynamic table. So let's see how to do that in our code again. So we go back to the user interface. We have table, table outputs, output ID. Uh, we have static. Uh, we have data table outputs, output ID, I say dynamic. So when I run that, I come back uh, to the server, we have outputs, outputs, dollar sign static, which is render, render table, colibris, uh, uh, half head, of empty cars data sets. We also have outputs, dollar sign dynamic. We have render data table, poly brace. Uh, we have head of empty empty cars so i can run so that we see what we have where is it so this is a static table that i've input there is a static table then this is the dynamic table where the user they can filter you can say all empty car mpg that is 16 they can just filter they can just be interacting with the uh we want all maybe 20 maybe 20 we can even go to next they can go back to previous previous we can go back to next so so 
So the user, they can just, because I use head, so head is going to show us, it will not show the entire table, but let me show the entire table. So I'll just call, put empty cars here, so that it will yeah. show us the entire table. So this is going to show us the entire table. They can go to next. This is the end. They can go to previous. We can select all 14. These 14. So they can filter for specific inputs. I think this is very useful. Maybe uh, if you are done with your work, maybe you want to share some result with somebody. We can just put everything in the shiny app. Just send the link. The user begin, they begin to interact with the app. You just display the entire data frame in a shiny app. So they will just be clicking to see what is going on with your data. So let me proceed. I think this is just an example. We have table outputs, static table, dynamic table. Then here we have render table for uh, static, we have render data table for the rendering uh, the dynamic uh, table. So yeah, talk about plot download. So how do we download? We have plot outputs. We always use the render plots in the server. Here we have plot outputs. The output ID is going to be what plots. Then the width of the plot is 400 pixel. But in the server section, we, are, we need to make, make we need to reference this uh, input ID. So we have output dollar sign plots in the server. Then we use render plots. Then we say plots one to five. Then the resolution of the plot should be set to 96. We always they explain that it's always good for us to set uh, the resolution of the plots to 96 so that uh, that plot uh, it will fit our very well in our shiny app. The view of the shiny app, it will fit very well. Then uh, for the download, we just need to call the download uh, download button, then the input ID, download data, then the label will be download. Uh, and But the download button, they say it requires new techniques in the server function. But we'll come back to this in chapter nine. We'll come back to this in chapter nine of the book. So uh, the layouts, layout mainly uh, define how the look of the app, styling the app, using team, making use of tab set panel, uh, like the bootstrap, which has to do with CSS. Uh, uh, and I think uh, the BS lib, Package is very good because we can use that uh, to style uh, the user interface uh, of our Shiny app. Uh, we have page, we have sidebar, and also the main panel. So within the sidebar panel, we can have slide the slider inputs. We can have so have the select inputs or the date range inputs. We can place those components in the sidebar, but in the main panel, that is where we. We can display maybe text. We can also display uh, the plots in the main panel of the app. Uh, we have the CSS grid. We also have tab sets and also team. Like the tab sets, maybe in the in the user interface, we have various tab set panel. And those tab set panel, we are going to give several control. Maybe we can one have one tab set panel that is talking about summary, another one for table which is very useful, like for the team, uh, this one is to style the, the app, the look of the app, which makes uh, the app to be very nice. When we have the flute page, title panel, this just talking about hello shiny, then the sidebar layouts, sidebar panels, slider inputs, input ID is observation, uh, the label will be observation, minimum value, the maximum value and value is going to be the default value that will be selected when, when we start uh, this app. Then the main panel, this is where we now add, uh, display the plots, plot output. Then the output ID is this plot, which is for the plot. Uh, 
I think that is that for this uh, plots. Then for, so for under the hood, so under the hood, this is what is going on is uh, HTML or CSS. This is, uh, if you want to go beyond, you want to go beyond, uh, if you want to go in deeper uh, in Shiny, we, we need to be able to start learning uh, uh, the hypertext map-up language or uh, Cascadia style sheet CSS, uh, like this is just like a div, which is class uh, container float, which is, uh, and this, we can get this uh, when we just type, uh, when we type uh, float page, float page, we can see it's a div, opening div, which is a class container float. This is the closing div. I think this is the same thing they have. This is the same thing uh, they were trying to show us here. Uh, div class input container, which is like for the flute slider inputs. We can call the slider input also slider, slider inputs. Minimum is missing. Minimum is maybe eight. Maximum is 10. Uh, value is missing, default value is 20. Input ID. I think value should be between the max and min. Can it be beyond the max, the max? Let's see. The value. Let's see, input ID, number, uh label select i'll see yeah so when we put all those it shows that this is a div class form group shiny inputs container which is just letting the same thing they were showing here then this is a label for what is your name which is label, what is your name? This input ID, name, type is text. So these are all HTML code. So you can see that what everything we have been working on in the user interface, at the end, R is going to convert everything back to HTML. Then the server is where we now put the actual R code that will run. But everything we have been writing in the user interface, uh, R is going to convert all those uh, input control back to HTML because that is what is showing us uh, what the user is seeing, the look of the app. So R is going to convert all those uh, to HTML. So, but for you to go in deeper to become a very good shiny developer, then, then you need to also have a good grasp of HTML and CSS. I think it's going to pay off to learn HTML and CSS. So, so what about other tools and material in which we can use at when to, to, to learn further in Shiny? They make mention of the Away from Shiny extension. They make mention of the uh, Away from Shiny extension, which is a, which is a good uh, resources. We also have the Shiny widgets, uh, Shiny semantic, uh, Shiny mobile, uh, shiny materials and also the shiny dashboard. If you want to build a dashboard uh, in shiny, we also have two other good book, uh, the engineering production great shiny app, and also the outstanding shiny uh, user in interface with shiny. I think I am still I am in this other uh, cohort also. So, so in summary of what uh, we have learned today. Uh, uh, we have looked at uh, that UI introduced the three components of user interface of Shiny. Uh, here we have the inputs, we can be text, uh, numeric variable, which is numeric inputs. We have dates inputs, we have limited choices, we have radio buttons, uh, we look at checkbox, we look at file upload buttons, uh, we also look at uh, uh, the text outputs and these text outputs, we need to 
in the server, we call them with the render text. Uh, we also have the verbatim text outputs in the user interface, but we call we render it with the render print in the server. We also have uh, the outputs. Here we have text, tables, plots, and also download. Uh, in this case, we have table outputs. We are using render table uh, for statics table. We have data table outputs. Then in that case, we are going to use render data table, which is for dynamic tables. Uh, we have uh, the plot outputs. We're going to use the render plots. Then for the layout functions, we will have page with sidebar, the main panel, the bootstrap, the top set team, and also uh, the CSS. So I think uh, that is uh, basically uh, what uh, the chapter uh, the cover. But if you have a firm grasp of this chapter, I think in the future, in the next chapter, we are going to look at reactivity, how we are going to uh, work with the server side of the shiny app. But this is this chapter mainly cover almost everything we have to to do uh, with the user interface. I think that's all. I don't know if there are any comments or questions because the next is just uh, the video. Yeah, uh, just a comment. Uh, thanks a lot. I think the, the the explanations were very clear, and I was able to follow along, even though I I had no idea about this stuff previously. But the explanations are very clear. Thanks a lot. Welcome. Yes, yeah, thank you. Those who developed Shiny so that we don't need to see the scary HTML texts, and we just enjoy using the Shiny. I mean, it needs to push us beyond the limits to think of learning HTML. I have no idea what HTML is all about and CSS, but maybe if I'll be pushed too much, then I'll get some grasp of them. But anyway, interesting how the, the user interface is designed, what we can input, what we then catch in the server to output. Yeah, great. Okay. I don't know if Matthew is still there. Yes, I'm still here. Yes. Hello, oh, for me. Thank okay. you so much. Maybe you can just stop so that, uh, or I should put stop on the chat so that John will know where the meeting stop. Okay. Let's...